Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about survival knife ideas. To give you some ideas of different knives that do work well in survival. And I wanted to break this down into kind of a three, three different or distinct chunks. And that is going to be most optimal, optimal, and suboptimal. So in our most optimal category, it's going to be knives that can perform consistently, reliably, and do all the tasks that you would likely encounter in survival, maybe or with or without the assistance of something like a saw or a hatchet. Optimal means that it should it should be able to do most survival tasks, but will likely need the help or assistance of alternative tools, such as axes, hatchets, saws, uh, different different tools like that. And in our last category is going to be suboptimal, which should be able to do most survival tasks, but will not be able to do, uh, will not be able to do large survival tasks, but are still durable, still tanky knives that can be readily and easily carried. Okay, so we're gonna start off with suboptimal knives. Like I said, these are the knives that you probably don't want to do survival tasks with or encounter survival situations with, but these knives will hold up to some hard use. They just likely won't be able to do a lot of different survival tasks. However, the one advantage that a lot of these suboptimal knives have is they are very carryable. So they're very easy to put in a pocket, put in a pack, put in a pouch and have on you. And so they will assist you and they're better than nothing, but they are definitely far from everything. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right into it. So the first two are Benchmades and the first one is going to be the Benchmade 535 Bug Out. And the Bug Out is a pretty decent knife. It's a pretty solid blade. It's a pretty solid blade overall. And uh, it is a pretty tanky, pretty durable blade. However, it is very thin and it is of course reasonably small. Now the advantages to the bug out is it is an incredibly lightweight knife, very thin, very easy to throw in a pocket, a pouch and forget about it, but still have a very viable edge for cutting, notching and other tasks such as that. Next to that is going to be Another very similar one, and that is the Benchmade 556 Mini Grip. And the Mini Grip is very similar to the Bug Out. Now, it does have a little bit of a thicker handle, but overall, once again, a very small blade. It is still capable, like the Bug Out, of doing things like skinning game, processing natural resources, feather sticking, uh, carving. It's just that you're going to have, uh, you know, not really a lot of ability to baton. It is a tough knife, and like the Bug Out, you could baton with it. Okay. Next one up on the list is going to be the Microtech Ultratech. Now this one may or may not be very realistic for most people to carry, but this little automatic knife is once again very durable, very hard, very hard use um, kind of blade. You can certainly beat the heck out of it. Once again though, you're just going to encounter a very small blade that is not going to be able to span a lot of wood, but you can still process game animals with this knife. You can still process game animals. You can still uh, you know, feather stick, baton limitedly, baton limitedly, and do all of that fun stuff with this guy. Now, potentially, arguably, the most capable of all the suboptimal survival knives is going to be the Victorinox Ranger. Now, the reason why I say it's probably the most capable of all is it does have a saw blade on it. It does have a couple blades, including your smaller pen blade and your larger main blade. So you do have so you do, get, you do get quite a bit of capability with this guy. And of course, the more craftier you are, you know, you can use things like the corkscrew for awling out wood. This also does have just a simple awl, a file. And so, you know, depending on how crafty you are or ingenious, you can make the Swiss Army knife do a lot of different tasks in wilderness survival. Once again, will not be optimal, but it is going to work. Okay, next one up on the list is we're moving over to the category of optimal. And like I said, with optimal, these are gonna be blades that can do a lot of survival tasks, but still will likely be a little bit undersized for harder, larger survival tasks, such as, you know, full, <coughs> such as full on firewood collection, and maybe even some varying degrees of survival shelter building. Okay, first one up is going to be the SC4. Now the SC4 is widely regarded as a serious survival knife and it does have a lot of good capability. But once again, as I've said on the channel, I feel like the four inch blade itself is just a little small and uh, definitely leaves a, a bit to be desired. Uh, but overall, it is still a very hard wearing and very capable knife. Make no mistakes about it. 
Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Cold Steel 4 Max Scout, which is what you guys are looking at here. Now, it is, it might surprise some people that a folder is on the optimal, you know, kind of end of knives or classification as it is a folder, but the 4 Max Scout is a very large folder, very thick, very rope bust blade and it is capable of taking a absolute beating and just continuing to sail right through wood and i would say the only real um the blade might not be large enough to baton through some pieces of wood but aside from that it is very capable very tanky albeit a little bit on the heavier side but it does have that really nice ability that folders do to have a very low profile and very small size so that is why i put it up on the optimal knives okay next one up on the optimal knives is going to be the street buoy now some people question the street buoy um, and you know it is certainly a little bit not the most ergonomically pleasing but it is still comfortable enough to hold and at the same time too it is a really super lightweight blade and as i've mentioned in other videos the reason why i like that lightweight knife is or why I like including lightweight knives on this list is for the fact that a lot of people won't carry knives or one of their biggest one of the biggest drawbacks to carrying a knife is its weight so having a very lightweight knife means that you're very likely to carry it and have it on you in an actual survival situation not to mention for its light weight it is also just under 10 inches in overall length so it is pretty good for a size a pretty decent size for a wilderness blade. Okay, next one up is going to be the Mora Garberg. And the Mora Garberg, once again, similar to the SC4, is a very solid, very robust and capable blade. It's just a little bit smaller than my preferred size for a true to life survival knife. And once again, I tend to lean more towards 10 plus inches for survival blades. So these four inch bladed knives like the SC4 and the Mora Garberg are just they're optimal because you will be able to get things done, but they are not the most optimal. Okay, speaking of the most optimal knives, now let's talk about them. Of course, these are not going to be likely new to many of you guys, but they are solid blades that are solid performers. Solid blades that are solid performers. And the first one up on the list is the SC6. The SC6 is very capable, very venerable. And like I've said with the SC4 a lot, that I feel like the SC6 is really the best survival knife in SC's lineup because it pairs a good thickness in the blade. It pairs, pairs a good thickness with a good length and a very, very comfortable handle. Unlike the SC3 and 4, the SC6 is a totally redesigned handle that allows you lots of sprawl space to move your hand in different directions and it is a very very comfy blade next one up as it surprises no one is going to be the srk from cold steel made out of sk5 high carbon steel or sometimes san mai or 3v uh, there are many flavors of this blade out there this is another blade that's super hard to go wrong with especially in places like alaska because the fully rubberized handle is very comfortable or more comfortable in colder climates and temperatures we're going to talk about the smallest of the most optimal and that is going to be the Spyderco Aqua Salt. Now the reason why this blade is on the list even though it is around nine and a half inches in overall length is simply because it is the best water performing blade and I think that uh, you know if you have to choose a blade and you spend a lot of time around the water in the water or a mixture of both in and out of water uh, the Aqua Salt is going to be the best blade for you because once again it still is a pretty decent size but it also is a really good edge and really good blade for cutting food prep you know batoning I have batoned this one it is a little bit on the thin side like it's an eighth of an inch thick so it's not the most optimal for batoning but it still will get the job done and uh, it is just a hard tough wearing little blade the edge retention could be better on each one for sure but it is not bad either okay Next one up is going to be the 3DK Amok. This one is an Alaskan survival blade made by 3DK or Three Dog Knives, and it is a very tanky, very uh, 
wide, long, and recurved blade that is designed to do multiple purposes. It's kind of like a multifunction blade. And uh, once again, being made out of LMAX, it is quite rust resistant, not quite H1 levels rust resistant, but it is still pretty darn rust resistant. And it gives you a lot of blade to work with. So if you are working around water and not so much in water, that might be a better option. Okay, last one up. And these are done, of course, in no particular order. I'm just picking them up and talking about them because I feel like I do talk about the, some of these blades quite a bit. But the Falcon Even A1, once again, another one that I talk about quite a bit because I love it a lot. And they are very solid performing knives. Uh, the A1, similar to the F1, is a triple layer of BG10 laminated steel. And it is another very solid water or corrosion resistant steel. It's not rust proof like the h1 but it is very very corrosion resistant it's fully rubberized handles very similar to the srk is going to also make it very comfy in wet cold and uh, just damp environments in general it's also the thickest on the line up here which does help it out a lot in chopping and batoning so if you're looking for a really durable really tanky blade the a1 actually might be the way to go Okay, guys, that is some solid survival knife ideas. Like I said, there are tons of survival knives out there. There are even ones that I haven't mentioned that I have. Things like the Hoongless 2, the Gerber Prodigy. Uh, there are tons of knives, but I thought I would just mention some of my top picks and some of my favorite overall choices for survival knives to give you guys some ideas. As always, God bless, and I'm out.